Good evening, Philippines! Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Ito po si Teresa Pantoversosa. This is Dr. Jude Verzosa. Good morning, America. It's a bright, it's bright and early Saturday, and we have for our guest the world-renowned, one of our most favorite uh, teachers. Uh, I learn from him all the time through my wife, of course. Um, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Pudua. Okay. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Good to be with you. It's yes. very early where you are. Yes, it's I quite. Know. It's still dark right here uh, honestly and it's all it's all good and let me read to everyone your bio so we can start moving andrew Pudua is the founder and director of the institute for excellence in writing and a father of seven traveling and speaking around the world he addresses issues related to teaching writing thinking spelling and music with clarity insight practical experience and humor his seminars for parents, students, and teachers have helped transform many a reluctant writer and have equipped educators with powerful tools to dramatically improve student skills. Although he's a graduate of the Talent Education Institute in Japan and holds a certificate of child brain development from the Institutes for the Achievement of Human Potential in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, his best endorsement is from a young Alaskan boy who called him the funny man with the wonderful words. He is right. He, is a, he and his wonderful heroic wife, Robin, have homeschooled their seven children and are now proud grandparents of 14. Is that still the right number? 14 is the current count, but they're coming okay. fast and furious, so who okay. knows? Okay, <laughs> making their home in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It is my pleasure as a parent as an educator as a nurse as a filipino and american all in one to honor and to welcome this great teacher as we bring him live and up close and personal to your homes in the philippines please help me welcome mr andrew Pudua. Woohoo! <laughs> all right welcome back andrew round two yes thank you <laughs> Yes. So how are you? How have you, how have you been? What's, what's, uh, looks like you're out of town. Yeah, I'm in a hotel room in Pennsylvania and, uh, I'm on a couple cities trip of very small meetings. Uh, it's been a different year for me. In fact, uh, I was, I was looking at the number of weeks or months where I didn't go anywhere. And I realized I haven't slept in the same place that many consecutive nights for probably 25 years. Wow. So it, it's kind of a big change for me to be off the road. So uh, I'm happy. My wife seems to enjoy having me around. At least she says so. <laughs> uh, it's uh, been opportunity with, uh, I have uh, three grandchildren, four grandchildren who live in Oklahoma nearby. So spending a lot of time with um, it was a really hot summer, so we got access to a swimming pool. That was kind of nice. And I've been uh, practicing my cooking, uh, so I'm, I'm developing some side skills. Uh, but uh, at AEW, we've been hugely busy. Uh, mm -hmm. So many people coming into homeschooling for the first time. Um, you know, I, I think especially even uh, international exposure. Uh, I did a conference in June, and uh, we had people from 23 different countries participating, you know, in an online conference. So that was very exciting as well. Yes. You know what? When you said this year is pretty different from what you're used to doing, it's amazing how every guest of ours at Empower Philippines Coffee Conversations <laughs> says the same thing. And one thing strikes uh, in, in, in my way of thinking is that, well... Maybe this is a reason, maybe God put us here so that just for once, we have time to bring you into the homes of the Filipino people, at least for our country. And for that, we have to thank COVID for that. Because I think if it wasn't for COVID, then it'll be hard to invite you over. But we have, we have to thank you as well, Andrew, because we know you're very busy. You travel a lot. And even these not, uh, COVID times, we know and we're certain you're very busy with your foundation and helping out other people, especially the homeschooling community. So we, we thank you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I have to 
second uh, the motion with Jude because what we've been telling everyone who listens to coffee conversations is that what Jude and I have learned and are still learning while here in America, where God has planted us to be, even when our roots are in the Philippines, we live here, but still our minds and hearts are still there quite fascinatingly, but that, that is the reason why we do what we do to share to them whom we know and whom are the best, if not the brightest, of people who can help encourage them in their spirituality, in their faith, and education. So actually, among all of the guests for education, you are our favorite. And then for, we will have one coming up for social thinking, Michelle Garcia Winner. I don't know if you've heard about her. Yeah. But so anyway, let us go now straight to the two points Stay that in. I have mentioned in the email. And that is to basically just break down the, the parts as to how we can encourage parents in helping their children understand how to build up vocabulary. And two of the things that I love about what you teach is the power of read aloud and the power of memorization. I say this with great passion because right now in on Monday, Zachary is actually going to perform live in front of his homeschool community, Patrick Henry's Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death. And Speech, yeah. it's, it's so powerful. And the only person I could ever think of that really teaches that is you and Bishop, our favorite Bishop in the Philippines, Bishop Ambo, whose book, by the way, sorry, I'm di digressing. We still have to mail to you. So if you can tell us why it's so important first, either way, you can start with memorization or read aloud. Sure. Well, <clears throat> backing up even just a bit, mm -hmm. uh, I think most parents, whether they're homeschooling or not, um, would put a high priority on their children being able to communicate well, to listen, speak, read, write, think. Um, and I've been running around the world teaching writing for a quarter of a century. Seems like a very long time when you say it that way. And I don't know, about halfway through, maybe 15 years ago or so, I had this kind of stark realization that in teaching writing, what I'm trying to do is help children get liably correct and appropriately sophisticated language um, out of their mind and onto paper. <clears throat> and, and my realization was that you can't really get out of a mind something that isn't in there to begin with. A child cannot think of a word that, unless they already know that word. The child can't put words into sentences and use them unless they have a good database of sentence patterns to choose from. They can't use uh, a, a literary device unless they have experience and have uh, you know, that part of their orientation toward language. So what I began to wonder is where do most children get most of their language input from on a daily basis? Well, um, I don't know about, you know, every family on the planet, but I do know uh, statistically in the United States, the number one influence on children's language is television. And we could say by extension, other forms of media. So that would include, of course, anything they bump into uh, on the internet, videos on the internet, language on the internet, uh, radio, perhaps you could mm -hmm. include in that. Uh, even such things as, as billboards and signage, things that are just in the environment that kind of come into the mind. And <clears throat> you would ask the question, uh, will television and other forms of media provide for children a source of reliably correct 
and appropriately sophisticated English language? And sadly, uh, the answer is no. If anything, uh, television and media provide the opposite. It's reliably unsophisticated and frequently incorrect. And if that's the number one source of language coming into children's brains on a daily basis, what are you going to get out of it when you ask them to, to speak intelligently or write articulately? Uh, it is not, of course, the only sort of language. If we look statistically, and of course, there's many families for whom this is a different ratio, but the, general, the generalized statistic is that the number two influence on children is peers. Hmm. Uh, children who go to school and exist in age segregated environments, which would be about 95 or more percent of the schools that any children go to, they separate and put all the years old, you know, uh, all the nth graders, the year grade fours in one room together. So what happens when you put children who are all uh, approximately the same age in one room together? Do you notice that they provide for each other a reliably correct and sophisticated, appropriately sophisticated language? No, if anything, it's again the opposite. It's reliably unsophisticated and frequently incorrect. And if you're not sure about this, just get a little room full of, you know, half a dozen nine-year-old girls and spy on them for a while. And you'll notice that they sink down to the lowest common level of vocabulary and sophistication and sometimes even thought and ideas. Uh, it's very rare where a child, children who are the same age, one of them will maintain kind of a higher standard. In fact, I... I uh, came across some research many years ago when I was uh, still working in the field of early childhood music uh, in a professional journal, and I haven't been able to find this article, but it fascinated me at the time, that um, when a child is with another child who is at least two years old, that child uses a higher level of language, more sophisticated vocabulary and complex syntax than they would uh, otherwise which kind of makes sense because who all, all the grade fours want to be like the, you know, the grade six, they, they're always likely to emulate up. Uh, also, interestingly, a child who is with another child who's at least two years younger than they are, that child will use more sophisticated language. Why? Well, that student is in, you know, big brother, teacher, uh, leader, kind of boss mode. It's actually when children are with other children, their same age, they use the least sophisticated language that uh, they are likely to. So uh, that, of course, you know, for a lot of parents, they put children in school. So they're there for six, seven more hours a day. And then sometimes they go to extracurricular activities and they're still with children their same age. Um, and then they equip them with electronic devices to stay in com con continuous communication. Uh, through text and, and phone or whatnot, or, or Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp or whatever they do. So they're kind of in constant communication. And I, I know you are probably well aware that when children are uh, communicating uh, by electronic means, they tend to break down the language even more. Mm -hmm. They're less likely to use <clears throat> complete and sophisticated uh, sentences, rather abbreviations and all sorts of, uh, almost a hybrid language, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, that's pretty rough for most of the children in the world who spend an average. Now, this is a U.S. average. I don't know what it is in the Philippines or elsewhere, but the average school-age child spends 25 hours a week watching television or its equivalent. That's a tremendous influence. And then, you know, they're also in school probably 25 to 40 hours a week. Um, so that's, you know, the top two influences on children in terms of their language ability or language development are both not reliably correct and appropriately sophisticated. 
Then, of course, you've got, uh, you want children to read. Every parent wants their child to read. In mm -hmm. fact, it's, it's almost a sign where we think, oh, my kid reads a lot. That means I'm a good parent, right? But not all children do. Uh, some children are late readers. Some children uh, have uh, issues of dyslexia or dysgraphia that make reading unpleasant or difficult, or they have attention issues that make it really hard to stick with it. And of course, I'm sure you've noticed, as I have over the last probably 15 years, um, it's so much easier just to pick up your phone and play a game or watch something than to pick up a book and stick with it for an hour. So everyone's attention span is, is being fractured, uh, not just children, but also as adults, but of course, you know, children. So the, uh, the bottom line is that children today read very little compared with children 30 years ago, even 20 years ago, I've noticed this. So even children who can read don't necessarily read, and those who don't like reading don't read much. So you're not going to get a lot of language into the brain these days uh, by having children uh, read as much as possible. Uh, sometimes it happens, but the majority of children would, for the most part, prefer to do something other than read books unless you construct an environment that is free of electronic amusement and free of the things that would replace reading. But there's one way to get, to get language into that mind and build that language database every day. And this can be done uh, whether you're homeschooling or not. And that is to read out loud to children. We used to have a, a, I would call it a bedtime story culture. Um, I, I know that when I was growing up, we, we had a television. We watched, you know, a limited amount of television every night, maybe an hour, hour and a half, something. Uh, but always, I mean, as you know, until I was probably a teenager, every night my mother or my father would read me a bedtime story. And I'm sure their parents did the same and their parents did the same. And there was this read out loud to your kids culture that is really dying. And I think that if we want to give our children the best opportunity to develop great reading and writing skills, and thereby also speaking and thinking skills, then restoring that read out loud culture at home is essential. And it is the, I believe it is the most important thing that a parent can do with a child in any given day. Homeschooling full-time, homeschooling part-time, you know, COVID schooling, unschooling, um, whatever you're doing. You know, every parent homeschools. Mm -hmm. Every parent homeschools. Even if they put their children in a school eight hours a day and half day on Saturday, that child is still home and they're still learning at home probably more than, in many ways, more than what they're learning in school. Um, there was a very popular book um, uh, years ago, you might uh, recall it, I, I don't know if it ever made it uh, to the Philippines, but it was called Everything I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. You know, do you remember that book? We, we, no, we have we're it. reading, yes. he, listening to that Excerpts. at one point. Excerpts, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you know, it's a cute book and I think it's got a lot of, it makes a lot of good points, but I think the better book would be Everything I Really Need to Know I Learned from My Parents. Um, sure. My parents taught me, you know, math facts and spelling words and geography and history and read the newspaper out loud to me and kept me informed on current events. I wouldn't just, but I don't remember learning a thing there. All the things I remember learning happen at home. So, you know, I like that idea. Every parent homeschools, just some do it full time. Uh, and when you think about it that way, okay, we've got, you know, whether we have three hours a day at home with our children or, you know, 24 hours a day at home with our children, we have that time. So I'm trying to make a good case for every parent uh, restoring what I would call the bedtime story culture at minimum. And then the how about read out loud an hour every day culture. That would transform society right there. If every parent read good and great books out loud to their children for an hour a day, 
that would completely transform the culture. Wow. wow. You know, Andrew, I, I love what you said about the use of electronic devices. And you, we've mentioned, you've mentioned that the last episode about how prevalent it is. But the effect in society and the effect in our children is very insidious. It's not something that's very uh, apparent. Uh, there is a lot of medical literature out there on the use of social media and how it affects and moderates the effects of language, weaknesses, and executive dysfunction. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it is something that is greatly discouraged in, pa in uh, patients or in the pediatric age group who are already exhibiting uh, uh, early learning disabilities. Um, so this is not some, some uh, random opinion from mm -hmm. homeschool parents. These, mm -hmm. these are supported by medical literature. That's true. And then I also love your point on, um, on, the, on the use of devices and how uh, uh, it's almost like a hybrid language, she said, you know, in the Philippines. Um, and I say this very fondly. Okay, uh, because I can sometimes fall victim to this in the use of emojis and all that. But in the Philippines, texting has taken a world of its, a language of its own. Um, I often would, when somebody sends messages to me um, uh, in, in, in an abbreviated way, I often ask my wife, you know, what, what does this mean? <laughs> because there, uh, e even a word, uh, the, the vowels are taken out so that they can be shortened. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting how you, how you said that it kind of, evolves or devolves language um, in, in a bad way, especially for those of you who, just like us, are trying to raise uh, children already with learning disabilities. Yes, and uh, I would like to also point it out there that what you had just said, Andrew, is that uh, when you don't read aloud to your children, you lose that opportunity to build the language database. If we have these cell phones of which we update them every so often, you know, it says you have to update iOS, how much more actually should we be updating our minds and our brains, right? <laughs> I mean, we love our phones so much. Who was that guest who said uh, Filipinos love their their phone so much oh our future guest he was funny he, he knew the filipino culture and i said you're right father filipinos they love their phone so much and i'm one of them we are one yeah. we are one of them i mean i can't i can't i can't live without my phone now but it doesn't mean that well my brain matters more than anything so if my phone has a brain so sh I, should, I have my brain too, and that's, that's, the, that's the most important brain of all. So I like how you said that um, good and great books. So the question, therefore, is how do we tell Filipinos, how do we know which one is a good and great book to choose from? Well, I think a lot depends on your own experience with books. Uh, if you grew up in a home of readers, uh, if you went to a, a school where you read uh, kind of the more traditional uh, books in English for children, you would be familiar with those. Um, you know, I grew up with books like uh, Charlotte's Web by E.B. White, um, um, uh, Cubby in Wonderland, um, Chronicles of Narnia. Mm -hmm. As I got older, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed the Grimm's and Anderson's fairy tales, mm -hmm. uh, the Lord of the Rings, you know, just to mention a few. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you grew up, you've got your own experience to draw on. But now, because there's such a community of people interested in reading out loud, uh, there are many, many resources. Um, and, and there's kind of a revival of interest in the classical curriculum, which includes the good and great books. So if you feel, uh, you know, that you don't really know, you know, what book should I get? Mm -hmm. um, well, there are lots of free book lists. If you wanted to start with just a simple Google search on classics to read to children, uh, you would discover that uh, almost all of those books, classics to read to children, um, have been in print for a very long time. Uh, if they're a classic, it generally means it's been around long enough that the author is probably dead, 
possibly the author has been dead long enough that the book is in the public domain, which means there's no copyright restriction and you can get thousands and thousands and thousands of good and great books uh, for free on the internet. Now, you know, there's a up and down there. You may have to read it off a tablet or a screen uh, unless you have a, you know, printer with good toner and you can print out, you know, the 200 pages or whatever it is. Um, but also, of course, now with um, Amazon being worldwide, it is uh, so much easier for people in every country to get something from other countries. Mm. And uh, uh, I don't know about the condition of libraries. Uh, most of our libraries in the States have been, you know, shut down by COVID most of the time. Uh, but uh, that should get back to normal. And oftentimes, you know, library people who work in libraries work there because they love books. And so if you came in and said, what would be a good kind of classic children's book? And they'll take you right to a few options. So uh, there's that. I will, you know, self-promote just a little bit and say uh, on our website, iew.com, uh, we under the, uh, I think, help tab or something, we have uh, a free PDF. It's a, just a short one. And it's a list. It's called Books for Boys and Other Children Who Would Rather Be Making Forts All Day. Uh, so it's a book, you know, it's a list of books that are kind of intentionally, hopefully, uh, engaging to, to children, and especially the ones who would maybe rather be running around doing something else. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'm guessing that you've heard of my good friend, Sarah McKenzie. I heard her. I, I listened to her podcast, uh -huh. podcast. Not recently, though, but I was going to, to ask you about her. Yes. Yeah. So she uh, she also lives in Washington State in the oh. eastern part of the state. Oh. Okay. And she has her podcast called The Read Aloud Revival. Right. And uh, she has many book lists. She tends to um, also include books by more modern, oftentimes living authors. Uh, she's also Catholic. Yes. And uh, uh, wrote a book, uh, Teaching from Rest, which is a great book for all moms, but especially moms who are trying the homeschool thing. Mm -hmm. So I would strongly recommend, and I'm happy to make a personal introduction, yeah. but I would strongly recommend her as a guest for your Empower Philippines uh, coffee conversation. She's a delightful person and will just talk your ear off about uh, the joys. You know, I, I tend to talk about the, the benefits, the language development benefits, the cognitive benefits, the, almost the practical benefits of reading a lot to children. She gets into the joys of reading with children, which you really, you know, need to explore. You need to discover that joy, otherwise you won't stick with it. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you can read my mind, Andrew. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I would like for I would like to yes. ask him if he could introduce us to her. I, yes, I listen well, to Bless her. you for that. I, I mean, that would be Yeah, yeah. Go, ahead, no, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I have a I I'll, I'll have a I oh so much, so much, you know. Um read aloud Teresa and I before this this podcast. We were already discussing, you know, what's the best way? What's the best way to reach out and read reading aloud? It, it, it could be a topic in and by itself. Yes, yes. I, ha I have actually a comment and then a question. Sure. Um, and I'll, I'll read this from Up to Date. Up to Date, Andrew, is, is a medical program. It's like our Bible. It, it uh, draws from different medical resources. Um, it's a great and easy way to look at journals, uh, medical journal articles. And um, I pulled up something about uh, reading aloud in, in terms of wow. preventing and helping children with learning disability. Mm -hmm. And it says, um, the home environment in which reading is practiced or that provides structure, predictability and routine can monitor the effects of language weaknesses and or executive dysfunctions. But these factors are not always considered in mm -hmm. terms of educational intervention. Mm -hmm. But when they are implemented successfully, they help prepare the student to learn in the classroom. Well, this is talking about in general, mm -hmm. but uh, learning as a whole. My question, Andrew, is, and, and maybe coming from a parent, mm -hmm. right? Um, is it read aloud or read, uh, uh, read aloud to uh, your child or read aloud with uh, your child? And the second question is, 
um, how would you apply that in an environment where uh, the household is, has two languages? Maybe oh. for immigrants in the United States mm -hmm. or in the Philippines, right. the medium of instruction should be English, but really the national language is Tagalog. Mm -hmm. And complicate that with the fact that we have a couple of hundred dialects. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> Uh, the, does that throw a wrench into reading uh, aloud? And how would one approach it as a parent? Well, um, first of all, in terms of um, if English is your second language and you live in the United States, your children will learn English. Yes. Even if you never speak to them in English, they will still learn it because all the environment. Mm -hmm. um, all of their peers, every place they go, all the media. And the opposite is true if you uh, are in a foreign country. Um, you know, if, if you live in China, you may not learn Chinese nearly as fast as your children who will pick it up from the environment. Mm -hmm. um, now, the good thing about, about reading out loud is that if you read every word, you're going to be articulating auditorily for that child, perfectly correct sentences. Now, some parents may worry a bit about their pronunciation, but that's not such a big deal because pronunciation will come more from the environment. So uh, that's one benefit if, you, if English is your second language, but you're reading in English out loud to your children, you're giving them the highest level of vocabulary and syntax that you can provide for them. Um, likewise, uh, if you want a child to learn a second language, uh, so people in the Philippines wanting their children to be able to understand, speak, and read uh, Tagalog, is that how you say it? Yes, right. Tagalog? Mm -hmm. um, well then, the best thing you can do is provide high quality examples of that language um, you know, you've got daily life, and, and I know, because I've been to the Philippines, people do mix the languages together all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's okay, too. That happens in many, many places. But if, you, if there are some good books written in that language, or maybe some good books that are translated into that language, mm -hmm. uh, or even just good stories, you know, there, I think, um, for example... Hans Christian Andersen fairy tales sure. right. have been translated into almost every written language on earth. Mm -hmm. So I know that it's likely it would be available in Tagalog. Now, the, the dialect problem, I can't help you with there. Um, you know, you would obviously read it with the dialect that you speak it because mm -hmm. that would be the natural way to go. Um, and we have that in English to some degree. You notice people from England uh, ha have a different way of saying things, slightly different usage, or New Zealand or South Africa. It's all English. And, they, you know, kids sort it out. They're not confused by that. Uh, so uh, I would think that the typical Philippine family would like to uh, balance uh, reading high-quality literature in English and also in their, uh, you know, national language uh, of choice. And, and again, you know, the upside of technology is that we have access to so much that we would otherwise almost never have been able to find, especially if we live in a more remote place where there aren't things like universities and libraries very handy. Uh, another suggestion I have for your old phone, right? Now you get a new phone and you're very excited because you love your phone, but now you have an old phone and it's hardly worth trading in. And so now you have this old phone. What do you do with it? Well, you disconnect it completely from the internet. You disconnect it completely from the, um, you know, Wi-Fi or, or the, uh, the Service. LTE or whatever. And then you load it up with audiobooks. Uh, and then you give it to your kid and let them listen to audiobooks whenever they want to. Right. That's what uh, all three of my daughters who have children that are old enough to enjoy audiobooks, 
that's what they've done with their old phone because nobody really even has iPod anymore. It's all phone. Uh -huh. um, but you disconnect it so there's no amusement. You take all the games off and you leave only audiobooks and then the kid figures out by about four years old how to push the button and make the audiobook come on. Uh -huh. My grandson, uh, when he stays with, our, with us, he, uh, he just turned uh, five years old. Okay, so he gets up earlier than anyone else in the house and his mother has trained him uh, to get up and quietly without waking her, go to the Legos or Duplos and turn on an audiobook and listen to an audiobook quietly while he's playing with Legos and he can occupy himself for, you know, an hour or two or more. Uh, which is a real blessing because the last thing I want at six in the morning is a grandson banging on the door shouting, Grandpa, Grandpa. So I'm a big fan of, I'm not a fan of the game babysitter, uh -huh. but I am a big fan of the audiobook babysitter. Yeah. Wow. You know, thank you for that. Coming from Andrew for the Filipino audience. Listen up, Filipinos. <laughs> yes, please listen up because this is a bit of wisdom where I hope, I really wished that when I was younger and when Jude and I still were living in the Philippines that we had known this because I personally they had t the TV as a babysitter for Sky, who is a director now, who's 20 years old, who's directing this Coffee Conversations. And the thing is, it's fascinating how parents in the Philippines and even grandparents would say, oh, my son learned how to speak in English. And you would ask how, oh, he was listening to this Cartoon Network. And now I realize, you know, they were beating and then they're not the it's language, not, not sophisticated language. language patterns, but we were just like, oh, you can speak English because mm. of that. But if you really look at it, oh mm. my goodness, I wish we had those audiobooks. Mm -hmm. How much more? Yeah. My goodness, that will have been the smartest brains there in that family. So thank you for bringing that up, you know, and letting us know that more than the games, audiobooks is the more preferred choice if you have to engage children with electronics. Yeah, now here's a little bit of good news. You can, of course, buy audiobooks. Um, Audible.com is uh, owned by Amazon, and they have, you know, hundreds of thousands of books available, uh, but you have to pay. And for people on a budget, you know, even a couple hundred dollars a year, it's significant. Mm -hmm. So there is a website called LibriVox, L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X. We're going to type that in the screen. Uh, yeah, I think it's LibriVox.org. It might be LibriVox.net. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. It's all free because mm -hmm. Libri for free or for book, right? Free, free in book and voice. So it's a double entendre Latin combination, uh, LibriVox. And um, another good thing about it is that because it's free, all of the books are in the public domain. There's no copyright restriction on the books, which means they're all older books and good books. And now I will say some people read these books better than other people. Uh, you know, there's a certain skill to reading out loud, and not all of them are excellent. Uh, but there are many, many good ones, and it's a great way for people to get into audiobook listening uh, on, uh, you know, on a on a tight budget. So mm -hmm. that's one suggestion, and I'm sure there are more. But uh, you can, you know, provide the links that you find also for uh, people to get free audiobooks. Yes, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Andrew. I want to uh, tab on to my wife, wife was saying, what Therese was saying about uh, the way that language is developed uh, and how our children are exposed in the Philippines. And I, when I say this, I mean this also in a very, uh, coming from a place of love and coming from a place of, uh, I was born and raised there. Um, even coming home, when I speak to my friends who are uh, English speakers, very well educated, uh, their language is uh, like, TNTs or uh, 
mm-hmm. one of those uh, the channels, uh, the, channels yeah. the TV channels, um, oftentimes with the use of slight profanities here and there. And there's nothing wrong with that, except that that's not what we're trying to promote mm-hmm. for language development. When we speak of language, we want sophisticated language development, right? right? Yes. It's yes. not just audiobooks, it's the content of the audiobooks. Well, right. one mm-hmm. can argue, well, Sure, they could also listen to um, what's a channel on TV? I don't know. Uh, uh, we don't watch TV. Uh, a channel on TV, but but the way they speak will be as they see on TV, and that's not what. In reality, when I went to the United States and I started working here, uh, and in the level of work that I do, mm-hmm. uh, it's not going to work, folks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what you've learned on TV, it's not going to work for success. Yeah, and you know, it's not just for children. I listen to audiobooks all the time because uh, anytime I'm driving, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the radio, especially, you know, public radio in the U.S. is so sickeningly uh, biased. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't hardly stand listening to the radio. Uh, I, I prefer information over music myself. Mm-hmm. So I always have an audiobook going on. And it's interesting, you know, 15 minutes twice a day, uh, I can knock off, you know, dozens of books a year that I otherwise would not. The other suggestion um, is, you know, we all wish that we would uh, read the Bible more mm-hmm. uh, to strengthen our knowledge of scripture. Um, but it's kind of hard, you know, there's busy and then there's other things you might choose. Uh, so audio Bible is also available. And so if you uh, put on a recording of someone reading the scriptures, uh, you know, even at breakfast in the home, uh, everybody can listen and just kind of semi-consciously absorb more of the word of God mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, listening maybe to the same uh, book of the Bible again and again and again, and even start to um accidentally memorize some of it Mm -hmm. through environmental factors. So uh, that kind of, uh, I think, is a particularly wonderful way for, uh, you know, Christians to um, just keep that scripture going throughout the day. Uh, So sometimes I like books because they keep me engaged, but sometimes in between a book, I'll go back to my recorded Bible and listen to that for you know a few days or weeks um, in, in between, and then I'll get another book. Oh, I want to read this one. <laughs> read, <laughs> read with my ears. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to listen to another book. So, uh, and of course, there's also uh, you know great Catholic literature that mm-hmm. uh, can be chosen for children uh, and adults as well. So not just young children, but you know people tend to think, oh, you know if my child can read, well, then I'll stop reading to her. If my child can read, well, then he doesn't need audiobooks. Mm -hmm. No, the opposite is probably true. As your child starts to read independently, that's when they most benefit from language above their own decoding skills. That's what pulls up comprehension. Could you give us more detail on that, uh, Andrew? I think that's a very important uh, point that you make. Um, Sure. Well, you know, if a child uh, starts reading and they kind of read what they can read and it's it's relatively easy, they will want to continue to read things that are like that, that are relatively easy, not too long of sentences, not too many unfamiliar words, uh, you know, kind of a titillating storyline. And so a lot of people do kind of lateral shifts. They start you know, when they're young and they read the Babysitter's Club or the Star Wars books and they practice their decoding, you know, then they get a little older. So they have to read something that looks like it's written for someone a little bit older. Mm -hmm. So then they, you know, pick up, you know, Percy Jackson or whatever the, you know, popular thing is. And then they get a little older. So they have to read something that looks like it's written for someone a little bit older And then they, you know, go to whatever the popular thing is, Twilight for, you know, the quote, young adult fiction. You know, uh, young adult fiction is just horrific. Most of it is is dreadful. It's badly written. It's got awful moral standards. It's targeted at the most sensitive. It sometimes has even the 
you know, subtle pornography effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so all parents should completely reject anything called young adult fiction. Mm -hmm. um, but then they become adults and they're used to reading that stuff. Yeah. And so they look for stuff that's kind of written at a grade five reading level. Uh, so they pick up the popular novels in the bookshop or, you know, wherever. But then, you know, they try to pick up a classic book, you know, something like, like, um, you know, Anna Karenina by, mm -hmm. uh, by Tolstoy or uh, something by Charles Dickens or good heavens, even Lord of the Rings. And they can't read it. It's too hard. Now, if children are learning their decoding skills, but they're hearing literature above their own decoding skills, then they're getting exposed to words they would not read. They're getting exposed to longer sentences. They might not be able to to say to themselves and figure it all out. So you actually pull up reading comprehension by um, auditory use of literature, either reading to them, which is best, because then you can talk about it and define words and explain idioms and stuff, uh, and then supplemented by the audio books. So uh, that's one thing I think a lot of parents kind of like, oh, finally, my kid is reading, now I can, you know, go teach the next one or go clean, the, you know, do the laundry. No, keep reading to your children until they leave your home. <laughs> you know, thank you, Andrew, for letting us know about how not to abandon the reading time with our children, which is, of course, very vital now that we see Filipino parents in ac accidental homeschooling. But I just wanted to point it out there for a Filipino audience how true that is. Again, as I've mentioned earlier, that Zach and I have been memorizing Patrick Henry's, which is one of the founding fathers of America, because the U.S. history is the subject of the debate in classical conversations where Zachary is part of, and he is going to memorize, give me liberty or give me death. I have to be honest, I haven't even learned about this speech until now and I'm learning and as I learn and Zach learns my goodness I have if if that were not for if it weren't for the the speech I probably would not have taught Zach what does supine mean you know in one of his uh in in the latter part of the speech it says shall we acquire the effectual means of our assistance while lying supinely on our backs and hugging the delusive phantom of hope until our enemy shall have bound us hand and foot. And then all of a sudden he was so tired of memorizing, right? And then he just went slumped on the floor slumped and he says, floor. I'm look, mom, I'm so tired. I'm lying supinely on my back. I'm like, yes, all you right. know, it's so, it's just like, oh my God, this is what Andrew's yeah. saying. So I just wanted to make sure to tell the Filipino audience that that is really working when you stay with your child and teach something that's so difficult and i like it I, you have to trust me on this but my fellow filipino parents because zach has autism and i say this with with passion trust me on it because if zach could do it how much more your your kids can do it and he says this which is like a bulb in his mind he says now i get it mom what was difficult is now easy. And I said, how did that happen? Well, by repetition is exactly what we were doing by repetition. So I'm just so proud to share that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And this is another thing that all parents can do homeschooling or not. And that is bring in good quality language to memorize. Now I would recommend for the listeners out there, don't start with Patrick Henry's speech. <laughs> it's, <laughs> It's a bit of a challenging uh, use of language, a little bit antiquated, uh, very high level vocabulary. It's a wonderful thing to do, uh, but start with something a little bit uh, gentler, uh, which I like, of course, um, you know, as Catholics, we have two really wonderful traditions of memory. One is memorizing scripture, uh, and most Catholics uh, historically memorize scripture um, because they hear it so much. Uh, so they just start memorizing psalms because they're praying psalms, you know, every day. Modern Catholics don't do this as much, unfortunately, but we still do have the memorized prayers of the Mass. 
And so most all children memorize those prayers. So there's proof right there. Any child can memorize. Uh, and they don't have to understand it perfectly. A child can, you know, memorize the creed or the Gloria and not have to completely fully understand everything that they're saying. I mean, how many of us actually completely fully understand <laughs> much of, of the mass prayers? But uh, so we have the, the scripture and the prayers of the mass, so many of which are derived exactly from scripture. Uh, we also have the tradition of the catechism. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is memory work. Uh, you, you hear the question and you recite the answer. Mm -hmm. And as you recite the answer, you're not only uh, teaching and reaffirming your faith and what you know, the precepts of the church, the doctrines and dogma of the church, you're also doing that with high quality uh, excellent language. Uh, so uh, I think all Catholic parents can go straight to uh, the scripture, uh, in particular the famous passages, the, the helpful ones. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes there's a, a list of passages that are good for apologetics. Mm -hmm. And so memorizing those. Um, I met a young man once uh, at a homeschool convention. He had memorized the entire book of James. Wow. He was 12 years old and he was working on it for a couple years. And I said, wow, that's amazing. Do you want to recite some? He said, which chapter do you want? <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Uh, now, not every child will do that, nor will every parent think that that's, you know, necessary. Uh, but he took it as a personal challenge. Yeah. Uh, so scripture, uh, mass prayers, catechism. And then of course, Poetry. We have a beautiful tradition uh, in all languages, and I'm sure there's beautiful poetry in Tagalog. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you may have to work a little harder to find it if you don't know it. In English, of course, you know, we, we have the tradition of the nursery rhyme, uh, Mother Goose, and the simple nursery rhymes told to children, and then the great English poetic tradition. Uh, and this is where maybe uh, if you would uh, mention that I have a program called Linguistic Development Through Poetry Memorization. Yeah. I think you, you have this one, do you not? We have that. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's available if people are interested to purchase it from our website, mm -hmm. uh, iew.com slash LDP, Linguistic Development Through Poetry. Okay. Uh, and it starts out very simple with short little two line, four line poems. And there are five levels of this poetry program and level five is actually uh, as you uh, do uh, in cc excerpts from famous speeches yeah mm -hmm. and uh, so that gets the child in direct contact with the most beautiful and most articulate use of the english language throughout uh, you know many centuries so uh highly recommended to memorize uh, as much as possible. And, uh, you know, this is one of the problems with technology. There are uh, educators in the world who say, well, why should children memorize anything? Why memorize names and dates? Why memorize, you know, uh, even the multiplication tables? You can just ask your phone, right? So just ask your phone if you don't know when was World War I. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, the less you know, the less ability you have to ask questions. And so at a certain point, you know less and less and less and less. You don't even know there was a World War I. Mm -hmm. So you can't ask the question. Yeah. This is the problem. And uh, Jude, you love research. Uh, and there's a, a great researcher in Virginia named um, Willingham. Uh, I think it's Daniel Willingham. I'd have to double check. Um, but he's been doing a whole lot of research to show that, guess what? Knowing facts is helpful. Knowing stuff makes your brain faster and better. Knowing stuff improves reading comprehension. Knowing stuff is good, mm -hmm. uh -huh. which is kind of the opposite of, you know, this huge push for technology in schools. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, kids don't have to know stuff. They just have to know how to find it. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I, I love what he said. He said, your brain is a thousand times faster than Siri. Right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. you, you know, and you said it too earlier, Therese, was, you know, your, your brain is always going to be better than your phone. No matter, until your phone is embedded inside your head. And even then your brain is still probably going to be better. That's uh-huh. true. So, uh, you know, this memorizing of a wide range of information uh, as the, you know, classical conversations mm-hmm. program promotes so strongly actually helps create better readers, better writers, better thinkers, mm-hmm. better citizens, I would argue. Yes. Right. right. So true. A uh, hundred thousand different tidbits of information may not mean anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can be fed that information, but the brain, particularly the front, prefrontal cortex, synthesizes it to very useful data. And um, you can discover all these facts through Alexa or through Siri, but um, you're not training the brain how to use it in an applicable, uh, in a very practical way. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah, so we only have a few minutes and you wanna be respectful of your time, so did you have any more questions? Well, uh, well, maybe Andrew, you could give us give the listeners an understanding or, or some information about how to uh, reach your website, IEW, uh, uh, how to learn more about what you do, and the um, the merch- merchandise that you that you offer or literature material mm-hmm. that you offer that would be helpful to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, our website is uh, very easy iew.com and there are so many free resources Um, i have um, done about 240 i believe uh, podcast episodes uh, on topics like this and of course a wide wide range of more you know kids who don't like to read kids who don't like to write um, principles of motivation um, you know, uh, classical education, uh, dyslexia, the list kind of goes on and on. I had to fill up 240 episodes. So. <laughs> wow. Uh, so that's all available. If people are interested, you can kind of search, uh, you know, scan the list and see what looks interesting. Uh, there's also uh, some longer conference talks. Uh, the longer version of what we talked about today is a talk called Nurturing Competent Communicators. Nurturing and uh, that's a very popular one. So if you want to get into a little more depth on both of these subjects of reading out loud and memorization uh, and uh, some practical tips on how to memorize and maintain your memorized repertoire. One thing, Therese, yes. Tere- is it Therese? Uh, well, they used to, well, it's Therese, Teresa, Therese, doesn't matter. Yes. I can't, I can't say it quite like Jude does. <laughs> and I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> anyway. Yes, Therese, um, Therese, or whatever. Here's the trick. Once he's memorized this excerpt from Patrick Henry, yes. um, be sure that you have him recite it, you know, once a week or so right, right. Uh, for, for the next five years. Yeah. That way, he will never forget it. It's true. Sometimes people memorize something, but then there isn't a periodic reinforcement, and they forget what they memorized. This can happen in music. It mm-hmm. can happen in uh, dance or martial arts. Yeah. Uh, it can happen with scripture. You spend energy and time, a lot of it, memorizing something. But then if you don't say everything you've memorized often enough, then gradually you forget. And that's so frustrating yes. to everyone, especially to children, to right. forget what they once knew. So try to make kind of a little reminder checklist for yourself. Mm-hmm. And this is what we do in the Poetry Memorization Program is we give a little chart so you can check off saying, you know, every poem every day or every other poem every other day or every third poem every third day so that you kind of get maybe lifetime retention through enough repetition. Uh, so uh, that's a good thing. So there's, um, uh, in addition to podcasts and conference talks, uh, there's uh, articles that I have written, many articles, if people mm-hmm. like to read those. Yeah. Um, and then uh, if you are uh, wanting to learn about our writing program, 
It's called Teaching Writing Structure and Style. And uh, you can, you know, you can order it and we can ship it to anywhere in the world. But for international customers, we have a secret plan. You can't buy this if you live in Seattle, but you can buy this if you live in the Philippines, which is our whole program digitally delivered. Uh, that way we avoid the problems of shipping, which is sometimes cost as much as the thing itself mm -hmm. uh, or customs or delays or whatever. So we do have a special deal going on with our uh, teaching writing instruction style, full teacher parent training course on our syllabus. Uh, so you have to contact our customer service and they give you a secret code okay. that you can use. Uh, also, we have, uh, I think I mentioned this last time I was with you, we still have for the remainder of the year, uh, free three lessons on our newest video course, uh, Structure and Style for Students, along with level one of poetry memorization, along with uh, three weeks of our Fix It Grammar. This is all digitally delivered. It's completely free. And the link is iew.com slash lessons2020. So lessons2020. Lesson 2020. Uh, and then uh, you can, for complete free, you can get level A, grade three to five, or level B, grade six to eight, or level C, high school, or all three, if you have children in all different levels, or you're not sure which level. Uh, and you can try out our writing uh, approach, uh, along with uh, poetry memorization, along with our English grammar uh, fix it uh, for, uh, you know, three weeks at least. Uh, you can stretch it out longer if you do it slower. Uh, and then if you have questions, of course, you can uh, text or, e or chat or email or actually call our customer service people and we can help you, uh, whatever. Uh, if you're uh, wanting, you know, to get the best possible um, material at the lowest possible cost, uh, talk to them because we do have a special arrangement for uh, people living in overseas countries. Wow. This is huge. This is huge, uh, especially for the homeschooling community in the Philippines. And, and they're growing there. You know, our secret prayer, well, not so secret anymore, is that the homeschooling community would blossom and would really just um, uh, uh, take off in the Philippines. Because I feel that it's not only uh, investing in our youth, who are going to be our future mm -hmm. leaders, of course, but it's a culture changer. That's it changes true. the culture of yeah. the community. And yeah. there are homeschooling communities right now that are ongoing. Uh, if, if you know of anyone, please do share this video. This video with Andrew is replayable. It's going to be on our website. It's going to be on our Facebook page. Please share it because his resources, his, uh, I mean, just visit the website, IEW. Uh, I think and, he was going to say something. Oh, I'm sorry. I interrupted you, Andrew. I was just going to say, um, you know, this kind of is the clincher to what you started with originally uh, mentioning kind of the silver lining to the COVID cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's been very hard. Many families, um, a, a lot of challenges everywhere in the world. But one thing I have seen and a lot of people, and I'm sure you've seen this too, is kind of uh, because children aren't going to school and parents are working at home, they're unintentionally together, and many are discovering, hey, it's pretty cool to hang out together. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good to be able to learn and work at home. And, you know, I've worked in schools, I've been in public schools, I've, I've been in really good schools. And I'll tell you, it's very inefficient. Schools mm -hmm. are very inefficient. Children go there for six, seven hours a day, mm -hmm. but the actual learning time is really fairly minimal. Mm -hmm. So if you do choose to continue having your children at home and do homeschooling, don't feel like you have to do this seven hours a day. Mm -hmm. You can actually get, you can accomplish as much in two or three hours, just reading, writing, arithmetic, yes. and then have fun, work together, play together, you know, practice, uh, you know, music together. Uh, discuss your faith together, take trips. There's so much you can do with the time that, you know, uh, is just wasted on social management and logistics right. and, and uh, that. So 
anybody who's considering, okay, I think I want to continue homeschooling, um, you know, there's lots and lots of resources available, both the Philippines organizations, I'm sure you, you are uh, able to find them, uh, as well as all over the world. Uh, but um, I think that's a silver lining is that families have discovered, um, hey, we don't have to go to school. We can't go to work. Let's play basketball. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, you know, coming from you, Andrew, this one, I hope sometimes we believe that the Holy Spirit is from other sources. I hope, I hope that our fa Filipino families will listen to this, will listen to you, yes. because it really is uh, working. So thank you. I don't know how to mm. thank you for always indulging us. Even when Filipinos are very, we're far from you, you're always there to say yes. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, from the bottom of my, it's not heart, they said, it's from the bottom of your hypothalamus because that's where the limbic system is, the emotions there, you know, I'm a nurse. So I still remember that, uh -huh. right, doctor? Yes. So from the bottom of my hypothalamus, I want to thank you, yeah. Andrew. Yeah, and, 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 well, for your, and, 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 you, and thank you as well for sharing us your very well written uh, oh, yes. conversion story and letter to your friends when you converted to the Catholic faith. So cute. Um, now that's reading out aloud that we're trying to do so. in pieces with the family. It's uh, the, the letter that you wrote, uh, you, you and Robin, your wife, wrote to your friends and family uh, when you uh, transitioned from your old faith to the Catholic uh, it's faith. It's beautiful. Beautifully written. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad you got it. Hey, I have an idea. Once the world returns to semi-normal mm -hmm. and international travel becomes um, easier, Yes. And people can gather together without having to space themselves six feet apart. Uh -huh. uh, why don't you organize a live conference in the Philippines? And I will fly over with you. Yes, I will. Oh, hey. <laughs> and you can have Empower Philippines uh, in a big coliseum. Uh -huh, oh, uh -huh. wow. Thank you, Lord. For Thank you. That. And we will make sure that there's air conditioning. I remember your story from the last time, how much weight you've lost sweating <laughs> in the streets of Manila. <laughs> yeah, because you said, give me air condition or give me death. I didn't say it, but I thought it. <laughs> but you told me. <laughs> See, it's Patrick Henry. <laughs> it's Patrick. Yes, yes, but, yes. You know, um, but thank you. Thank you again, Andrew. Uh, we will hold you to that, and we will pray that one day, that would be true. Uh, we shared you our dream uh, uh, that, uh, of bringing home the homeschooling curriculum, particularly uh, uh, the teachings of IEW to the Philippines. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, there is already a homeschooling community or a Catholic community that's doing that in the Philippines. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. Remember you introduced Tina Rodriguez to us? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah there's, there's a few, um, but you know, I think your, your building uh, network uh, you know, of people very effectively. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's always, it's like, um, you know, there's always room for one more good thing. Yes, uh, yes. We will, we will pray that it would happen, Andrew. And we will hold you to this because this is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> you have no escape. Okay. Right. All right. right. Okay. And uh, one more thing that I wanted to share with you, Andrew, before I got to show you. Uh, I, I miss your joke of the month uh, YouTube videos. <laughs> Yeah, those little jokes of the month with little <laughs> cartoons on the side. My favorite is the confessional. <laughs> I shared it on um, my wall. Is that the one about uh, stealing the lumber? No, it was the confessional when this Catholic woman confessed her vanity sent to the priest. And you, the priest said, it's, it's okay, don't worry, it's not a sin. It's an error when she said it should the most people. <laughs> okay, so here's another Catholic confessional joke. Okay, All right. live. All a horrible right. joke, but man goes to confession. He says, uh, Father, I, I have to confess that I, I stole some lumber. Mm -hmm. And the uh, priest says, well, how much lumber did you steal? And he, he said, well, at least enough to build a doghouse. And uh, he said, well, that's, that's bad. So you have to say, you know, uh, one Our Father and three Hail Marys and a Glory Be. He says, well, Father, I guess I should be a little more honest. I, I stole enough lumber to build a garage. And um, 
He says, oh, that's, that's more serious. You need to do at least one decade of a rosary. And he says, okay, Father, I'm just going to tell you the truth. <laughs> I stole enough lumber to build a very large house. And the priest says, well, in that case, you're going to have to make a novena. Hmm. And he says, uh, Father, I'm not sure what a novena is, but I got enough lumber to make one. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> and Only Catholics Catholic. would get it. Just Which for, state? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the non-Catholics out there, that's not how confession goes, but <laughs> I'm pretty close. <laughs> okay. Well, again. Oh, so oh yeah, can we pray? Can we pray? Can we end our uh, please, yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah in the name of the Father, and of the, the Son, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Lord. Uh, today, we thank you for this opportunity with our great teacher, uh, Andrew Puriwa. Please, we ask for your blessings upon him and his wife, Robin, and his beautiful family and grandchildren and the company that he has founded, Institute of Excellence in Writing. Today, O oh Lord, he has given his time, his talent, and treasure for the <coughs> Filipino people. Even when we are distant, we are near. And for that, we thank you immensely for this great treasure whom we have found in, his, in, in him. And so, Lord, as a token of gratitude, the only thing we could do on behalf of the Filipino people is to is to bless him and keep he, and ask you to keep him safe so he can always be a messenger of your word in helping parents and educators and everyone in this world teach their children to become better thinkers, better writers, and better citizens of this whole nation, of this whole world that you have created for us. So, Lord, we thank you again, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Spirit. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. God bless you. We will and keep in touch. Yeah, and this is not going to be the last. Yes, we are okay. God willing in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, My Andrew. pleasure. God bless you. God Bye. bless. We'll let Andrew go for our listeners uh, out there. Um, uh, this is replayable again on YouTube. Bye, Andrew. Um, you can you can press leave. Well, there, there you go. go. Um, okay. <laughs> for uh, I'm sorry we weren't able to entertain much questions. Oh, I know questions? that the Skyler sent out a question from uh, Gerd Lee uh, for the shelter in place. The apos or the, the grandchildren mm -hmm. take turn reading out loud the Bible oh. with Lola and Lolo twice, uh, a twice a week. They often get confused with the old language style. Would this hamper their learning proper English grammar? Um, you are the masters in special ed. Would you want to address that? I think Andrew kind of alluded to that a while ago, saying that if your culture is Filipino, um, uh, the, the prevailing language would be easily learned uh, outside of the home environment. Based from my experience, um, Gurdili, Madami Salamat for tuning in. And for example, we are doing, let's say, Our Father, Our Father, the Wart in Heaven, hallowed be thy name. That is the English, old English words, thy, thou, hath. Hallowed. Hallowed, which is holy, hath, which is has, thy, which is your. Um, thine, which is yours. The more I think that we learn to read this and the more source text, meaning materials that we read, the more that we'll actu we're actually going to get it. I don't for one second think it is confusing. Right. It's actually when you keep reading through those, the same thing or maybe some other text that you realize, wait a minute. So I, I'm basing this from my experience with Zach, of course, Everything that I do and have are always based from experience. I mean, everything that I share. So, for example, we were doing this source text in half, you know, and it's only then when Zach learns that half means hats. And but the more that we look for other materials to read, just like what Andrew Putawad said, to read aloud, the more that you realize you become more familiar, which is how the brain works. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't really worry about 
confusing them confusing them mm -hmm. because again if you are going to welcome what andrew had shared with us today to keep reading to keep mm -hmm. listening to audiobooks mm -hmm. you will realize you will eventually encounter them mm -hmm. and the more that you encounter them again you will be more familiar with them yeah, yeah. very true and medically also you know, you could learn the language all the way until you pass away on this earth. So do not underestimate the malleability and the ability of the brain to learn the, uh, another language. The pronunciation might be very difficult uh, as you advance in age, but children's uh, language centers are very uh, accommodating of different language styles and different, uh, different languages, as a matter of fact. One of the errors that I feel that that occur for uh, immigrants to the, to the United States is uh, teaching their children only one language, the English yeah, language. Yes. In the, with the abandonment of what, whatever dialect or the national language, they don't teach it at home. And um, we have fallen victim to that for the, the past couple of years, but we are correcting that. Um, and not just for nationalism reasons, but because a bilingual a uh, student, a bilingual individual, will always be more successful. And uh, uh, the prevailing language in the community is always going to get learned, whether you like it or not. It's, it's always going to get learned yes. by, by, um, by your children. So teach them a second language. Teach them Tagalog. Do not abandon Tagalog right. or the dialect that you've learned, that you've grown, grown up with. Anyway, you want to announce our next guest? Yes, but can I just have some conclusions yes, from the lessons and lessons? So, ulitin ko po, and I would like to second mo the motion with Jude, doon sa parte na magtatagalog ako, na-appreciate ko, ang uh, na-appreciate, na, ano sa Tagalog, appreciate But anyway, so, uh, nagpapasalamat ako na ang tatay at nanay ko, well, kapampangan ko po, no? So, I could speak kapampangan, but, but magtatagalog na lang ako. Nagpapasalamat ako na hindi ako pinatigil magsalita ng kapampangan at ng Tagalog sa bahay. Because, kasi, kung hindi, hindi ako marunong magtagalog, hindi rin ako marunong magkakapampangan. Kung naging English lang ako, buong time na nandoon ako sa 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 bahay namin mm, pag di, pagdating ko dito sa Amerika na napansin ko po na gustong gusto ng mga tao dito na meron kang kultura na ipapa na ibabahagi sa kanila meron kang salita meron kang ibang lengguwahe na pwede mong uh, explica sa kanila pwede mong i ipakita no so kung hindi ako marunong magkapampangan hindi ako marunong magtagalog and i say uh, inuulit ko ulit ito is sa story ko paano ko sasabihin kung ano nangyayari sa Pilipinas paano ko maintindihan paano ko kakausapin ang mga tinutulungan namin na mga na nangangailangan sa Empower Philippines kung hindi ako marunong makihalubilo sa kanila ng kapampangan or tagalog so nakikiusap ako and this is really a plead sa mga kasama po nating uh, mga kayo na Pilipino na parents dyan sa Pilipinas, magtagalog kayo at magkapampangan sa bahay. O kung nung, kung kap Kapampangan is a language. Hmm. So kung kapampangan ka, magkapampangan ka king bale. Okay? Ang, ang English, eh, i-adapt mo yan pagka God willing, papasok ka sa eskwela. Magtagalog ka kung tagalog ka sa bahay. Nakikita ko sa mga kaibigan ko, nagsasalita sila na English sa mga anak nila. Walang problema yon. Pero just like what Andrew had said, outside the environment, matututo mo yan. Matututunan mo yan. Again, yung pong circles namin dito sa Amerika have found out na interesado pala talaga sila pag meron kang naibabahagi na kakaiba sa kanila. Okay, again, this is when you dream bigger na lalabas ka sa Pilipinas kasi one day gusto mong magbiyahe, gusto mong lumabas sa bansa, gusto mong ipagmalaki kung sino ka. Eh kung hindi ka marunong magkapampangan, hindi ka marunong magtagalog, ano yung pagmamalaki mo? Eh di pareho ka lang nila na nagsasalita ka na English. Again, English is important. It is the medium of instruction in the Philippines. I am thankful that Saint Scholastica had taught me how to speak English. I still remember they charge us 25 cents for each Philippine... Uh, each Filipino Tagalog word na they hear. And I know because I'm the president of the class in fourth, fourth year. But again, salamat talaga sa 
kang mako, magpasalamat ko kang mako at kang tatang ko na ay na, nakakinig ako pang paan and I'm fluent. I'm fluent in, in speaking it, I'm fluent in writing it, I'm proficient. Ipagmamalaki yon ng mga anak ninyo kapag ka marunong sila magkapampangan. Kung ang native ethnicity ng mga magulang is, kunwari Cebuano, kunwari Kapampangan, kunwari uh, Ilonggo, turuan nyo kung ano yun. And then extra ang English. but hindi baligtad na English ang primary? Pagkatapos, uh, hindi marunong, hindi marunong Agalo, nakaka-pick hindi marunong up sila. Marunong. Tapos hindi sila marunong magsalita. Now, sorry po, nagtatagal, but case in point, Zach was diagnosed with autism at the age of three. Nandito na kami sa Amerika noon. Marunong magtagalog at magkapampangan si Sky. But guess what? When Zach, the younger son, our younger son was diagnosed with autism, sinabihan kami ng speech therapist and the autism developmental pediatrician na you would want to um, stick to one language. Stick to one language for now because of Zachary's autism for the speech delay. Well, although that is an excuse in itself um, right now, we are slowly teaching Zach and Sky the art of speaking Kapampanga and Tagalog. So, inuulit ko po, kung wala naman palang, wala naman uh, speech impediment ang mga anak ninyo, turuan ninyo ng language ng meron kayo talaga, ethnic, mm. the ethnic language. Um, can I keep going for a few more minutes? Um, so, yung read more, read aloud, go to audiobooks, audible.com, tapos LibriVox. So, hindi natin makakalimutan yan. Libre, kasi lib Libre is L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X. And wala na tayong excuse not to learn using audiobooks. So, Bible, catechism, the mass. mass prayers, listen to homilies of uh, bishops. You know, of priests and talk about it. Then beautiful poetry, Mother Goose, Hans Christian Andersen, Aesop's Fables. So, kung wala po kayong libro sa bahay, again, Google it, internet, and then print it out. Kung walang printing, mm -hmm. kung wala kayong ink and cartridge, this is my recommendation. As part of your teaching your children, make it your writing task, make it your writing lesson for your child to copy a, a say, Aesop's fable, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say the mm -hmm. tortoise and the hare. Isusulat niya yon, and that's already the writing skill. Wag natin kalimutan that writing, like handwriting, is important in the brain. Wag lang puro type. Because that's very important. When you write, it, it makes the brain think. So writing the source text, meaning kung saan panggagalingin yan sa internet, and then as soon as you have written it, yung anak nyo ay nasulat na niya, then you can memorize it. That's in read aloud. So you got read aloud, you got memorization all in one. So the three, writing, read aloud, memorization. Okay, so is there anything yeah. else? No, I think that's it. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, do you want to give them um, some Go kind now. of an introduction? So, ang susunod po nating uh, guest, our next guest will be Steve Bray. Yay! Steve Bray, a, a well-renowned, world-renowned Catholic apologist, uh, someone who, um, uh, uh, he, he will delve into, again, uh, some of his apologetics, particularly the Eucharist uh, and the Holy Mass. Uh, and it will be another, another special event. So please uh, share it. It will be next uh, Saturday, your time at, I believe it's 9 p.m. Mm, ganitong oras din po. Exactly the same time as yours. Pero next week. Yes. Ganitong, exactly. or, ganitong same day, same day. 9 p.m. Saturday, your time, Philippines. So the great defender of the Catholic faith, Steve Ray, is now back in your computer screens next weekend and you don't want to miss it yeah thank you paul uh we love you please keep praying for us as we will pray for you uh god bless everyone and have a great weekend